Number 8. Kirsty Ennis Kirsty Ennis called it quits just a few hundred feet from reaching the top of Mount Everest. Kirsty is a retired sergeant with the U.S. Marine Corps. She was injured in 2012 during a helicopter accident in Afghanistan, leaving her with only one leg. Unable to continue in the military, Kirsty began to participate in adventure sports, and she found a new passion in mountaineering and snowboarding. Kirsty has done the unimaginable, even as an amputee. She's already scaled six out of the famous Seven Summits, which refers to the highest peaks on each of the world's seven continents. In 2019, she nearly got to the top of Mount Everest. Unfortunately, though, her team started to run out of oxygen, and they had no choice but to turn around. In 2023, Kirsty came extremely close to reaching the peak of Mount Everest again, but she chose to turn around instead of waiting in an unprecedented lineup. Kirsty had been climbing for 43 days. She was at the south summit looking at the peak only 600 feet from where she was standing. But according to what she told NPR, it didn't make sense to keep going. There was a line of people waiting to reach the top and have their pictures taken. It was like a lineup to see Santa at the peak of the world. Hundreds of people were ahead of Kirsty, and the feeling in her gut was that going forward would be a disaster. One of the biggest frustrations for Kirsty was that the people she saw on Everest weren't even mountaineers. The people holding up the line to the top were individuals who, according to Kirsty, shouldn't have been on the mountain in the first place. Deciding it wasn't worth risking death in the lineup, Kirsty swallowed her pride and went back down the mountain. Number 7. Dr. Sugarman Jonathan Sugarman climbed some of the tallest peaks in the world, but right before he could finally achieve the ultimate goal of conquering Everest, he died. Jonathan was a retired doctor who called Seattle home. He was described by his family as an experienced and passionate climber and a man who wouldn't give up easily. He prepared to climb Everest by acclimating himself to the altitude. He trained in Himalayas, climbing to other peaks, getting used to the strain and intensity. He ascended Labuchi and Island Peak, and he even conquered the perilous Kumbu Icefall. But Jonathan had a serious issue with elevation. He departed Everest Base Camp with his team at 17,598 feet. Then the 69-year-old man reached Camp 2 at 21,000 feet. The team was going to rest briefly and then keep climbing to Camp 3 at 24,000 feet. But then, Jonathan suddenly became stricken by altitude sickness. The sickness killed him before he could leave camp, and unfortunately, it was something that had happened to Jonathan before. He'd reached Camp 3 on a previous attempt to climb Mount Everest, but he was forced to turn back. He'd also gotten altitude sickness before, while climbing Cho Oyu, the sixth tallest mountain in the world. But sadly, this time, it killed him before he could descend. Number 6. The Deadly Year The 2023 spring climbing season on Mount Everest was the absolute worst in the entire history of humans climbing the mountain. In 1996, there were a total of 15 deaths on Everest. In 2014, there was only one more death than the previous year, and 2015 saw 13 casualties. But in 2023, 17 people were declared deceased or are missing and assumed dead. Some died from altitude sickness, but the others nobody even knows. According to the Himalayan Times, five climbers are still missing near the peak. Why were there so many deaths this year in comparison to other years? It likely comes down to numbers. Many have blamed the insane number of climbing permits issued to foreigners by Nepal in 2023. An astounding 478 people were given permits to scale the mountain, and about 600 climbers, including non-foreigners, reached the peak. Most experts have pointed to climate change as being the biggest issue. Dr. Yuba Raj Ketawada from Nepal's tourism department blamed the strange weather. Managing Director of Expedition Himalaya Nabin Trital said the weather didn't feel right this year. Those who've climbed the mountain before said the same thing, that Nepal felt colder than usual. Compared to previous years, way more people were getting frostbite. Guy Carter with Adventure Consultants said it was the coldest season his staff had ever experienced, and he's been climbing Everest ever since the 1990s. Even Sherpas were suffering from frostbite, which was the first time Guy had seen such a thing in 30 years. Everest was so bad in 2023 that multiple sources said helicopter rescues were happening daily. There were around 200 flights from base camp to camp 2, which stands at 21,300 feet. 
There were so many people getting airlifted off the mountain that they practically had to form lineups. And now for number 7, but first it's shout out time. I wanted to give a big thank you to Jesse PRX for the super thanks and for supporting this channel. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like these. Number 5. Dr. Swart Dr. Pieter Swart was a Vancouver anesthesiologist who died while trying to fulfill his dream of climbing Mount Everest. For the past 19 years, Pieter worked at UBC and Vancouver General Hospitals, and when he lost his life, he was 63 years old and had been training for years to successfully conquer the mountain. He already scaled Denali, the tallest peak in North America, and he'd climbed mountains in South America too. But on Everest in 2023, something went medically wrong. According to Pieter's friend, Rael Klein, who'd known him since they studied medicine together in South Africa, he'd shown a positive attitude the whole way up. And whenever Pieter had cell service, he messaged his friend, Rael Klein. When he reached Camp 4, Pieter developed a dry cough. Then the cough became worse, leading to an unidentified respiratory issue. According to a statement from the University of British Columbia, where Pieter worked as an associate professor, climbing Everest had been his dream since he was nine years old. He'd pushed through the respiratory issues into what mountaineers call the death zone, which starts at 26,000 feet above sea level. Then the respiratory issues turned into something irreversible. He tried to climb down the mountain back to Camp 2, where a helicopter was waiting to take him to safety. But on his way from Camp 4 to Camp 3, Pieter lost consciousness and suffered cardiac arrest. Between the acute mountain sickness and a heart attack, Pieter never made it off the mountain. If you were almost to the peak of a mountain you'd always dreamed of climbing and began to experience some medical issues, would you brush them off and continue toward the top, or would you listen to your body and make your way down the mountain before it was too late? Let us know what you would do in the comments below, and while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. Now on to number 4. Number 4. Kristen Harilla Kristen Harilla from Norway recently became the fastest person ever to ascend the 14 highest peaks on the planet. But while she was climbing K2 in Pakistan in 2023, she saw some things that she'll never unsee. Kristen has come under fire for allegedly walking over a dying Sherpa on her way to the top. She's been criticized for not stopping to help, choosing to pursue her speed record at the cost of somebody's life. She was also admonished for celebrating her world record at base camp shortly after stepping over the dying man. Kristen has denied any wrongdoing. In an Instagram post, a 37-year-old Norwegian said she did everything possible for the Sherpa at the time. But what really happened? For those who don't know, K2 is Mount Everest's cranky cousin. It isn't the tallest mountain in the world at 28,251 feet above sea level, but it is seen as the hardest to climb, even harder than Everest. Kristen Harilla and her Nepali guide Tenjin Lama Sherpa were trying to beat the previous record for climbing all of the mountains in the world with peaks of over 26,000 feet. The previous record was held by a British adventurer born in Nepal named Nirmal Podja. In 2019, he reached the last peak in just six months and six days. But Arilla did it in three months and one day, shattering the record, maybe forever. The controversy came after drone footage showed Kristen stepping over the body of 27-year-old Sherpa, Mohammed Hassan. He was a Sherpa for a different team, and he died on the mountain. The drone footage showed Kristen maneuvering across the narrow passage and carefully stepping over the man before continuing on her way. The dying Sherpa wasn't completely alone, no. Kristen left her cameraman with Hassan to share oxygen and hot water. Harilla said she believed Hassan was in good hands and she was safe to continue up the mountain. But the cameraman she left behind only stayed for about an hour, at which point he had to descend because he was running out of oxygen. Then, when Kristen and her team were on their way down, they came across Hassan's lonely corpse. They thought about carrying him down the mountain, but it didn't seem feasible at the time. So, he was left there. Another climber on the mountain that day was Austrian national Philip Flamick. He said that when he found Hassan, there was only a single person helping him. Everyone else kept going to the summit. His climbing partner Wilhelm Steindl said that Hassan was being treated like a second-class human being. He said if the Sherpa had been a Westerner, it would have been a completely different story. Instead of the Sherpa being rescued immediately, he was left in the cold while everyone struggled to the top. Do you think Kristen Harilla was the bad guy here? Should she have sacrificed her record to help the Sherpa? 
Or do you think she was justified in leaving her cameraman behind and continuing to the peak? Let us know in the comments. Number 3. The Nepali Sherpas The first big disaster on Mount Everest in 2023 happened in early April. Three Nepali Sherpas were swept away by an avalanche that buried them deep inside an inescapable crevasse. The avalanche occurred at the southeast ridge route on the way to the summit, right as the three guides were transporting climbing gear for their clients. The area is between Base Camp and Camp 1 in the lower part of Mount Everest. Base Camp is a makeshift city of tents during the climbing season between March and May, sometimes more of a party hub than anything. Many people pay just to visit Base Camp, but they don't plan to climb all the way to the top. Between Base Camp and Camp 1 is the deadly Kumbu Icefall, which climbers have to carefully cross using rickety ladders strapped between huge cracks in the ice. And it was in this general area that the avalanche occurred. The crevasse in which the three Sherpas were buried is about 150 feet deep. A ground search team was sent to locate the missing climbers, but unfortunately, they were never found. Since they were buried under 150 feet of snow, chances are they'll remain inside the crevasse, possibly for thousands of years. Number 2. Jason Kennison Jason Kennison was an Australian man excited to document his climb up the monstrous beast known as Mount Everest. The last photo he took was uploaded to Instagram on May 4th, 2023. The final haunting photograph was of the beautiful view from Camp 2 on the mountain. But shortly after, Jason was gone. Jason's climb was part of his miraculous story of recovery. 17 years ago in 2006, Jason was in a devastating car accident which left him horribly crippled. He had a spinal cord injury which doctors told him meant he would never walk again. So, understandably, Jason spiraled into a pit of debilitating depression. It looked like Jason would spend the rest of his life without the use of his legs. But then, something unbelievable happened. Jason, through a sheer will of force and determination, with a touch of medical assistance, regained the use of his legs. He then embarked upon a journey to heal his body and conquer the tallest mountain on the planet. In the months before his journey up Everest, Jason took mountaineering courses in New Zealand. He practiced rock climbing and abseiling. He even constructed his own training facility in his backyard to practice roping and ladder crossing. Jason's family described him on social media as the most courageous and adventurous human they ever knew. And they also said Jason will be forever missed. Jason was documenting his ascent up the mountain to raise money for an organization called Spinal Cord Injuries Australia. It was a spinal procedure a few years earlier that helped convince Jason he was able to climb the mountain. In addition, someone close to him said that he could still do anything he wanted, and Jason wished to raise money for others who were affected by spinal cord injuries. Jason made it to the top of Mount Everest. After the tragic last photo was taken at Camp 2, the 40-year-old stood at the top of the world. He achieved his goal, but then something went horribly wrong. His Sherpa said that Jason began to exhibit abnormal behavior. His guides assisted him down to the balcony area, but that was as far as Jason made it. The Sherpa stayed with him for a while, but Jason refused to move. So, they had no choice but to climb down to Camp 4 by themselves. They collected refreshed oxygen cylinders and went back to rescue Jason, but they were hampered by wind and bad weather, and sadly, Jason died in the blizzard. Number 1. Sahida Szilard Elia Sekely was the last person to see Hungarian mountain climber Szilard Sahida alive. It was just after 4 p.m. when Elia saw Szilard on his way to the summit. It was a strange and haunting meeting. Szilard was moving very slowly, yet steadily crawling forward. It was already pretty late in the day, though, so Elia tried to warn the Hungarian that it was going to be dark soon and that he was going too slowly to reach the summit before sunset. He told the Hungarian that if he continued moving toward the summit, he'd almost certainly die. He also mentioned that the weather conditions were starting to sour. The wind was picking up and the darkness was coming fast. About eight hours earlier, Ben Ferrer was returning from the summit of Mount Everest when he came across a lonely climber sitting at what's known as the balcony. The climber was Szilard Sahida. Ben took a photograph of the climber, who was by himself. But Ben never imagined that the photo he took of the random climber sitting at the balcony of the world would be the last image ever taken of him. Ben said even at 7.30 a.m., Szilard seemed tired. But before Ben left, 
Silard got up and continued toward the top of the mountain. When Canadian climber Elia Sakerly had the fateful meeting with Silard eight hours later, it was only a few feet above the balcony. In all that time, Silard hadn't made it very far. But even after the warnings of certain death, he continued slowly upward. Then, just before he reached the top, late in the evening when the dark had settled, Silard collapsed. His satellite device pinged his last location at approximately 28,854.99 feet above sea level. The next morning, climbers supposedly saw Sealard clinging to life near the summit. But by the time the rescue team reached his location, Sealard was gone, and nobody's seen him since. Would you dare risk your life climbing Everest? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.